Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Lord's house on this uh, Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, Our service will be focused around the Transfiguration, but especially through the eyes of of Moses. Uh, So we will will embark on understanding Moses' understanding of life in Christ and and what he's looking forward to. Uh, So blessings as you hear that word of God. Uh, Our service is uh, fully printed. It's a creative service, so you'll need your bulletin. And so please have that in in your hands. And we're going to have the ringing of the bells and the singing of our first hymn. But first let us rise and greet one another with the peace of God. rise now for the invocation and our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And are this is my son, my chosen one. This is Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we take a moment of silent reflection on God's word and our own self-examination. Almighty God, merciful Father,
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For peace, despite our past mistakes. O Lord, have mercy on us. For peace to hear God speaking to us in this time of worship. O Lord, have mercy on us. For peace that we may, may be living stones in God's house. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord and the last Sunday of the, after the Epiphany is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 34, beginning at verse 1. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pishkah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms, as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, 
This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor unabated. And all the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there, was not, and there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, none like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we now continue with Psalm 99 that we will sing responsibly. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The King in his might loves justice. You have established equity you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called upon his name. They called to the Lord, and he answered them. In the pillar of the cloud he spoke to them. They kept his testimonies and the statute that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them but an avenger of their wrongdoings. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Epistles from Hebrews chapter 3. Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant, to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. 
But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for our Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, you are the most handsome of the sons of men. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated for our hymn of the day, O Wondrous Type, O Vision Fair. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
may be seated. Our text for today's sermon is taken from our Old Testament reading in Deuteronomy chapter 34. And the sermon is entitled, Moses, God's Promise at the Edge of Life and Death. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time for Moses to die. It's time for Moses to die, and guess what? We too will die one day. So God gives us an example of how to do this. How to do this dying well. Now the statement, this next statement, only this next statement, I don't know if it's true. But I've heard it said, and maybe you have too, like the moment before you die, all your past history comes up and you get to see everything that happened in your past. Have you guys heard that? I've heard that. Never been able to prove it out. But anyways, let's take for granted that that actually can happen. So imagine that happening to Moses. Right? He's there in the basket, floating on the Nile River. Now he is rescued from the Nile River through Pharaoh's daughter. And he gets to grow up in his own home for a while. And then 40 years, he is a prince in Egypt. And then he goes on to protect an Israelite and kills an Egyptian, buries the body, but the deed is known. And he flees into hiding. He goes and he runs away. Forty more years, he's in the wilderness. He is, he's shepherding the flocks of his, his father-in-law, Jethro, because he marries Jethro's daughter, Zipporah, and starts a family. And then 80 Years At the age of 80 years, Moses sees an unforgettable sight. A bush, a bush that is burning. And its leaves and its limbs are not being consumed. And there in the midst of that bush is the angel of the Lord, who speaks to Moses the divine name and sends Moses as a prophet back to his people in Egypt. More scenes of Moses' life would pass before us, one after the other. The appearance before Pharaoh. Let my people go! That's my best Charlton Heston. Come on, give me a, give me a moment here. Yeah. But then there was the staff, right, turning to a snake. And then the Nile turning to blood. The the instructions for the Passover were given. The lamb was to be sacrificed and the blood put on the lintel and on the doorpost. The mourning by the first, well, not the firstborn, but the families of the firstborn in Egypt who all died. And then the flight of the Israelite people at night. And then how could you forget the exodus? All the people were leaving. It seemed like they were going to be able to flee. But where did they flee to? Where did they flee to? The river. And on both sides, mountains. Behind them, Pharaoh's army. No way out. Moses plunges his staff into the, into the Red Sea, and the waters part, and they cross on dry ground, Pharaoh comes behind them. The waters swallow them up and take them away. And then on the other side, rejoicing. Rejoicing and praising God for the deliverance that they have received. And we're only getting started with Moses. The Lord brings them back to the mountain. The mountain that he saw the burning bush. But only this time, the entire mountain was aflame and on fire and smoke. And the Lord speaks from the cloud, and from that fire out comes, from his words, the Ten Commandments. And he summons Moses on top of that mountain before his throne. And the whole council of the Lord is there, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
40 days and 40 nights, Moses fasts and receives instructions on the building, on the building, the building of the tabernacle where God would meet with his people. Moses comes down off that mountain with with two tablets in his arms, written with the finger of God. Then there's that golden calf incident. I kind of want to forget that, but it does happen. And what does Moses do? Moses intercedes for God's people. Intercedes between them and God, saying, Do not destroy them, Lord. Turns God's wrath away from his people. And then there was the snake and the bronze statue of the snake that was put up. The constructions of the tabernacle. The anointing of Aaron and his sons as, to serve as priests for God's people. The fire that consumed the sacrifice that, God, that was for God. And the glory of the God would fill the temple. Fill the temple. And Moses was radiant. Radiant, not of his own radiance or his own power, but that of the radiance of God. There hangs, in, uh, there hangs a painting in the Hall of, of Presidents in the St. Louis Seminary. There's a painting of Moses. And you'll see often this time in artwork, Moses will have little horns on his head. So don't be worried if you see that out there. He's not, he's not, he's not the devil. He's got these little horns on his head. And what that is to manifest, to make us know, is that he was shining in the radiance of God's glory. And there were some miscommunications on those words, so they messed it up in the old times. But it's really an understanding of the radiance of his glory that would have to be covered. It's hard to paint that, and it's hard to put that on a statue. So know that that's what that is for. But that glory would come to fade. The light of God's face would come to fade. Moses asked to see God face to face. And God put him in the crack of a rock and caused his glory to pass by him. And he said, I will show mercy on those who I wish to show mercy on. Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land. Two of them came back with a faithful, exuberant report of this new land. Ten of them came back with a not-so-good report. And the people listened to the ten. So the Lord gave them 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Forty years of trouble. Forty years of temptation. Forty years of manna. Forty years of protection. Forty years of Moses taking time to publish Genesis and the other books of the the first five books of the Pentateuch there. But also, 40 years of funerals. 40 years of funerals, Pastor. None of the men who came out of Egypt would go into the promised land. Only the children. And in some way, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness is 40 years of a funeral procession. And now we come to the end. To the edge of the Jordan River, there on the mountain, there's only one left to die. And it's Moses. 120 years old, but his eyes, according to our text, were not, were undimmed, and he was full of vigor. Other than Jesus and King David, we know more about Moses than probably any other character in the scriptures. His life was stunning. So stunning you could make a movie of it. The life of Moses is a picture, though, of God's law and gospel. Moses is, after all, the law giver, the man chosen by God to bring down the Ten Commandments from the mountain of God. Moses' preaching had the authority and the thunder of God's word and holiness behind it and his wrath over sin. But Moses is not only the law. Moses got to fashion the bronze serpent there on the pole, right? When the people were struck by snakes because of their sin, he was able to fashion that bronze serpent on the pole, and anyone who looked to that pole would be healed, a foreshadowing 
of the cross of Christ. Those who look to Jesus will have forgiveness in life. Moses builds the tabernacle and puts in place the sacrifices with the blood and the bulls of the bulls of the goats, sanctifying the people so that God could come and meet with them and God could come and bless them. And this is a common understanding and seen in our today's churches, most of our today's churches, where we have the altar of sacrifice, where we have the holy place and the most holy place where we have the priests and the prophets speaking for God and where we have the body and blood of Christ the sacrifice given and shed for you another foreshadowing that Moses gets to participate in scripture says that there's not going to be a prophet uh, excuse me promises that there would come another prophet like him from among the people. There would come another who would be greater than Moses. So now Moses, now imagine Moses at 120 years of age. Man still full of life, standing on the top of Mount Nebo, across the Jordan, and his life is going to end. And what flashes before his eyes? Instead of his past, Instead of all that past, the Lord puts him in front of his promise. The Lord stands Moses up on that mountain and shows him the promise. Moses, as we would see, is a Christian because he puts his faith in the coming Messiah, the Christ who is to come. And because of this, God intends to leave Moses here in this place as he would, to die and live in faith. And in hope. So he shows him not a back look at his life, not all the great things God allowed him to do, but now at his death, the Lord sets him up to look ahead, to see what's ahead. There on the top of Mount Nebo, he sees Judah. What's in Judah? Bethlehem. Who's going to be born in Bethlehem? Jesus the Messiah. That's the village where he's going to be born. And there flowing just right below him is the Jordan River. The Jordan. What happens in the Jordan? Yes, the baptism of Jesus. There, there John the Baptist proclaims, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the Lord proclaims from heaven, God says, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. There He sees out there the wilderness of Judea. Where Satan is going to take Him out and tempt Him for 40 days and 40 nights. To the north of that is Galilee, where Jesus will teach and preach and call his disciples, where he will announce the coming of his kingdom and the coming of his kingdom to the church. Even further north, further north is Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration, where, where Moses stands with Elijah and Jesus and with the other three apostles, Peter, James, and John, where he expresses his own exodus. And he looks to the hills directly in front of Moses. There is Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city of the great king, where Jesus will suffer and die, lifted up on a cross, not for his own sin but for your sin, taking on God's wrath in your place, in the place of Moses, in the place of all sinners. And there too in that vision is the grave, the empty tomb, right? Three days later, Christ risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. Yes, Moses, 
you're getting to see something. And it's far better than the simple promised land. You're getting to see something far greater. What is to come? Remember, brothers and sisters, Moses is an example, an example of faith and hope. Moses does not look backwards over his past selfish victories if he were to do that. No, Moses is our example of looking to the promise of God, the ones that he has set before you, the one that he has set before you, Jesus Christ. See, we are the same. The Lord, when I say the same, the same as Moses, the Lord has drawn us out of the waters of holy baptism, redeemed us, forgiven us, given us his spirit. He has rescued us with the blood of his lamb, Jesus Christ, his very son. And he calls us to love our neighbors and to give thanks to him in our lives and live out lives of faith. The Lord has brought us, if we were to look back at our lives, through joys and sorrows, according to his kindness and mercy, he's done that. But when it comes to the end, when it comes to our last hour, the Lord points our eyes to the unwavering promise to Jesus, who was crucified and raised for us, who now intercedes with us, for us, on behalf of us, between us and the Father, there at the throne of God, saying, these are mine, these are ours. And he's going to return soon so that where he is, we too will be. The best is yet to come. The resurrection of the body and life everlasting awaits. Eternal life is ripe with promise. Promise for you. And then when it comes and when we stand there on the edge of life and death, the Lord's promise will carry you forward. The Christ will carry you forward. The joy of knowing that you have no end in Christ. You have eternal life. And more so, that on that last day, what Moses was hoping for, and what all his people are hoping for, is to see their Savior face to face. And on that day, that glorious day, it will happen. Our Savior promises, and it is done. Amen. We rise and we confess our faith uh, with the words of the second article of the Apostles' Creed from the Catechism. I believe in Jesus Christ. What, do, what does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, the true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also the true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ, the true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also the true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from the death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his We have a few, few things to add to our prayer list this morning. Uh, one is uh, Sonia Miller. This is a, uh, connected to the Lohmeyer family. She was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And there will also be a few petitions for the conflict going on in Europe right now uh, between Ukraine and Russia. 
So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Moses was the leader of God's people as they sojourned from slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land. O Holy Spirit, raise up people to govern their nation freely and justly. Give them courage to enact laws that protect all who live within their borders. Lord, in your mercy, the Israelites had to deal with the tribes already in the Promised Land. Around the world today, good Lord, guide and protect firefighters, first responders, and all those who go in harm's way in their communities. Accompany and protect armed forces deployed across the globe wherever nations are in conflict. Lord, in your mercy. The three disciples on the mountain were, were heavy with sleep. Surround people who are tired, poor, sick, or lonely with faith filled medical personnel, friends, and family who seek to meet their needs. We pray especially for those near and dear to us, including Sonia, Norma, Nedra, Dwayne, Kendra, Jim, Dave, Lloyd, Mike, Lisa, Carla, Beth, Amy, Marie, Steve, Audrey, Gail, and Mark. Use us as part of your answers to their prayers, Heavenly Father, to bring about strength, health, security, and companionship. Lord, in your mercy, for all the people of Ukraine who are experiencing military aggression, that they all might be kept from harm. Lord, in your mercy, for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Ukraine and Bishop Sergei Maschewski, for the Siberian Evangelical Lutheran Church, and Bishop Sevalod Leitkin, and for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Ingria in Russia, and Bishop Ivan Loptev, and for all those we call brothers and sisters in Christ, may their hearts find rest and comfort in Jesus, and that they might all serve as voices for peace. Lord, in your mercy, for all military personnel involved in this conflict, that they would carry out their vocations as soldiers in a godly way, doing that which is right, and refraining from doing evil, curbing atrocities, showing mercy, and doing that which is pleasing to you, God. Lord, in your mercy, for any and all families and family we may have in Russia and Ukraine, that they might be preserved in body and soul, for government and military leaders everywhere, but especially in Russia, that they might be inclined to walk in the ways of righteousness and peace, and cease military hostilities. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you accompanied the disciples as they returned to the others. Be among your church as it gathers anywhere around around word and sacrament. Bless your church and give your people courage and opportunity to spread the news of your death for our sins and your resurrection on the third day for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your gracious hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all from whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now sing our offertory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection, and with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Himself is present, let us now adore him, and with awe appear before him. hear the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Jacob, take and eat the very body of Christ given unto death for your sin.
We rise now for the dismissal. Now may this true body and true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul through the one true and saving faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God the Father, pleased with your Son on the Mount of Transfiguration, we give thanks for the pardon and peace you have given us for his sake in this sacrament. As he descended to the plain with his disciples, accompany us now on our journey with your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. and receive his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And before we sing our closing hymn, I want to draw your attention to the farewell to the Alleluia, and I will read this. Luke writes that after the transfiguration, the three disciples kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they have seen. Because we know about our Lord's resurrection, we cannot keep silent. But during the season of Lent, which begins this Wednesday with Ash Wednesday, we shall mute our liturgical praises and refrain from singing our alleluias until our Easter celebration. So let us sing our farewell to the song of gladness now.
The congregation may be seated for a few announcements, and I will first look to the congregation to see if there's anything that needs to be brought forward. Jan. Next Saturday, thank you, thank you. Other announcements? Miss Peggy. Um, I just want to invite everyone to come to the Philly Football tonight. Um, it is five to seven, and if you're bringing the chili, it is at, come at 4.30 to get set up. And um, we also have a cookie table as well for the Sunday school children, and that information is in here. And um, so it's a little bit of a worry that we will not have medals Uh, Tuesday night, the elders will be putting on a pancake dinner for Shrove Tuesday from 5 to 7, so we invite you to that. But as a result of that, my uh, Tuesday night Bible study will be canceled for this week. So you should be, the church is going to feed you like all week. <laughs> so. All right. Um, yeah, at, at that same time, uh, their Advent meals, are, 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 we're going to be having them again this year, so uh, please pan, plan on attending those Advent meals uh, uh, before each... Yeah, Lenten. Let's do Lenten meals. How's that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Also, the Lenten devotionals are out there on the back of the, in, the, in the narthex area. Uh, maybe if you haven't grabbed one yet, maybe the ushers can find those and pull those out and get you one for you. Also, we, have a, uh, we are blessed for next week. We have a guest preacher preaching for us next week. It's a young man, a young seminarian made, named uh, Keith Kettner. I don't know if you guys know who that guy might be. He's setting up here right now. But uh, he is going to be preaching next Sunday and also leading the Bible study as well. So, so. Uh, let's see. The final announcement that I have for you is to draw your attention to page 22 where the, uh, the COVID updates are happening. Um, we are now going to be uh, not wearing any masks. You can wear a mask if you like, but it, it, if you notice, we weren't wearing masks up here today. Um, I hug, I, I hug, and I shake hands, <laughs> and we all do that out there. It's time, and the CDC has released some of its stuff, so it's time. Which means it's also time that we bring back uh, common, the common cup. So you'll see the common cup back up here. So if you are desiring to receive the, the blood of Christ in the common cup, uh, it'll be there for you. Which also means that we're going to be moving back around the rail. Uh, so we will be coming and gathering around uh, the body of Christ here, uh, kneeling in reverence or standing in reverence, because I know not all of you can kneel. But, uh, uh, but again, if you have any questions on why the common cup left or why the common cup is coming back or what's the purpose and why we have that come talk to me uh, and, and I can help you walk through that and understand this one, this one cup that we drink from uh, and also please don't do it if you are feeling pressured or guilty the Lord doesn't do anything out of guilt so don't feel like you have to do it right? but it is a great symbol and a great gift Good. Again, talk to me on that. Are there any other announcements that I, I failed to mention or need to be brought forward? All right, if there are none, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you guys, I'm like, no, 
I'm sorry, I want, to, I want everybody out there in TV land, if anybody's watching, you cannot hear how good it is in here with you guys singing. The church, God is continuing to bless and open up the church and allow people to come back and new people coming in. It is amazing to be with the brethren and sing and, and pray and praise and everything else together in this place, surrounded by God's word and sacraments and given as gifts. So I know you're out there in the TV land and you like to stay out there, but we're ready to have you back. Amen. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.